Hey guys, Sock here from Socky Tech, and in today's video, I want to show you guys five things every Samsung Galaxy owner should do to their phone's camera to enhance their experience of the camera. You are going to love these, so let's dive in and start with number one. All right, the very first trick I'm going to show you guys is to save space on your Samsung Galaxy smartphone. Your Samsung Galaxy smartphone has a limited space. You could have a 128 gigabyte model, a 256 gigabyte model. And when you take a photo and a video, they take a lot of space. So let me show you a quick example. I'm going to take a photo right now of this plant. I'm going to go into the photo. And when I swipe up, you can see this photo right here is 3.2 megabytes. Believe it or not, that's a lot of space for a photo. It is a high resolution photo. So let's go back to the camera. I'm going to show you guys how to reduce the size of that photo. So all you do is you go to the settings. Your phone can be in landscape or portrait orientation, does not matter. Just go to the settings and look for advanced picture options. You can see it right here. You tap on this guy and you all you do is you enable high efficiency pictures and that is going to reduce the file size. So let me enable this. Once you enable it, just make sure you read this description at the bottom. There are some minor nuances here, but they're not that important for most consumers. So let's go back into the camera. I'm going to take the same photo, okay? Same conditions. I'm going to go in the photo. Now when I swipe up, look at that. It's 1.76 megabytes. So that quality is basically exactly the same. The first one was 3.2 megabytes. Uh, the second one is only 1.76 megabytes as you just saw. That's a lot of savings. It's the same exact resolution and 95% same quality. Now, you can do the same thing with video. So video takes even more space on your phone. And now when I go back to settings, and if I scroll down, instead of advanced picture options, I'm gonna go into advanced video options. I'm gonna tap on it, and I'm gonna say reduce file size. So it says save space without even sacrificing video quality. So I'm gonna enable this, but before I enable this, let's do a quick example. So I'm gonna to go to video, I'm gonna record a five second video at full high definition at 60 frames per second, as you can see. So tap on this, that's one, two, let's just do three, no big deal. Now I'm gonna go back in, there's the video. If I swipe up, you can see it is gonna be 12 megabytes, it's 1080p. Now, let's go back to camera, go to settings, go into advanced video options and tap on reduce file size. So now when I go into my camera and record another three second video, one, two, three. Now when I go back inside, look at this. It is only 7.81 megabytes as opposed to more than 12 megabytes earlier. So you're saving a lot of space. Again, for most consumers, this is not gonna be a problem. If you're a professional using your phone as a device to take photos and then edit those photos or take videos and edit those videos, you might want to stick to the normal mode. But for the average consumer, this is going to be a lifesaver. When you go into the settings, go to device care and go to storage, you're going to save so much storage. You can see how much images and videos take as far as storage is concerned. Now, in my case, I move my storage away so it's showing less, but most people are gonna see this all the way filled up and images and video taking the maximum amount of space. All right, let's go back into the camera and talk about some more fantastic features. Now, this next feature is a feature that is slowly rolling out to Samsung phones. It is a new feature. So you're gonna see this if you have it, and if you scroll down, you're gonna see the watermark option, okay? Now, when you take a photo, Watermark adds a pre-selected text onto all your photos as you see fit. So let me show you the example. So I'm gonna enable this. I'm gonna go inside Watermark, okay? By the way, again, you are gonna get this feature very soon if you don't have it yet. So it's great to know what's coming. So basically, you can add any watermark onto your, um, onto your photos when you take them. You can see I can add, I can tap over here, I can change the model name to anything. I can even change it to my name, you know, Saki. Could be a little signature on the photos. It would show up on the photos. 
You can add date and time, as you can see. And if you scroll down, you can change the font, all right? And you can change the alignment. It could be in the middle, left or right. So let's just show you an example real quick. Very simple. Take a photo. I'm going to go in the photo. Boom, we've got a little um, watermark with my name and date and time. Now, if you look at the other photos I took earlier, they were all clear. This at least gives you some kind of reference point. I personally just like to have the date and time. Now, this would show up on the photo if you share this photo. If you don't want these things to show up, then you just disable the watermark feature. So keep that in mind. Let's move on. Let's go back into the camera. Now, another feature a lot of people simply don't have enabled is the grid line. So you can see I have these white lines running around on the viewfinder and they allow me to align my photos much better. So if I wanted that photo in the center, this plan in the center, I can just put it right in the center of those grid lines, okay? And that would just make the photo look much better. Now, to enable or disable these, again, you go to settings, you scroll down, and you go over into grid lines, you just enable them, that's it. If you disable them, you're just gonna get a clear viewfinder. You can, it's hard to tell where the center position is. You can estimate, but with the grid lines, it's gonna be precise. So if I go down, let's see, grid lines, boom, boom, it's gonna be so much easier uh, to align that photo in a center, bottom left, bottom right, or wherever you wanna put that photo. Just make sure that is always enabled. Now, another thing I like with my camera is I like to use voice commands to take photos, plus a bunch of other features related to voice commands. So to enable voice commands, basically when you say cheese, it'll take a photo automatically. So let me show you how that works. Let me show you first how to enable it. So go to settings, go all the way down, uh, not all the way down, a little bit up and go to shooting methods. So tap on it and you're gonna see the voice commands right here. You can see, you can take pictures by saying smile, cheese, capture or shoot, or you can record videos by simply saying record video. So this is great. If you have your uh, phone on a tripod like this, and then you go on the other side and maybe you take a group photo. So let me show you one example. I'm gonna enable this. I'm gonna go into the camera. Smile. It just took a photo. It shows you that read your voice right here. Again, cheese. Fantastic, okay? You can do the same thing if you say record video. It's going to start to record the video. You simply have to be in the record option, but it's going to be controlled via voice command. Now, going back into the settings, you want to go back into the, let's see, shooting methods right here. And you want to take a look at these other options that will help you a lot. So you can press the volume key to take a photo or record a video, or you can tap it and you can change it to zoom in and zoom out. So if I am in the camera and I wanna zoom in, I just click on plus as you can see, or I can press the volume down button to zoom out, okay? These are very useful instead of pinching the screen like this. You can do that as well, but I like to do it this way. It gives me nice tactile buttons, but some people prefer to use these buttons to take an actual photo. If that's what you want, you go back there, okay, to shooting methods, and simply say, take picture or record video when I click these buttons, based on which mode you are in. Absolutely fantastic, alrighty? Now, one more setting you wanna be aware of. If you have a high-end Samsung Galaxy smartphone, like an S20, S21 Ultra, S22 Ultra, these phones have high megapixel options. So, for example, this phone, the S22 Ultra, has a 108 megapixel sensor. So when I take a photo just like this, it doesn't actually give me the highest possible quality. When you click right here where it says four by three and you select four by three, 108 megapixels, that's when you get the sharpest possible image. Let me reset this to one X. So right now it says 108 megapixels, four by three, it is gonna get me the sharpest possible image, but by default, if you don't touch anything, it always defaults to four by three. So let me just go in here to the photos. This is the regular photo I took. 
Look at the resolution, 4,000 by 3,000, it's 1.74 megabytes. Now let's look at the other photo that I just took with 108 megapixels. It is gonna be a larger file, it's gonna be five some megabytes, but it is gonna be 12,000 by 9,000. So you can zoom in into this photo and you can actually have even more detail. It's gonna be crisper, more clearer than the regular photos. That is not to say the regular photos are bad. This is just gonna take you to the next level. So make sure when you go to the photo, you tap here and you select 108 megapixels. Fantastic feature. The same applies to video. Go to video, tap on full high definition. And if you want to record 8K at 24 per frames per second, which is the highest quality, you're gonna be able to do it from here. Tap over here and choose 8K24. Don't forget to go back to standard after you're done. Most people are fine with full high definition at 60, but the 8K option using that high-end sensor is in fact there. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you guys learned some new stuff. Any questions, comments, or concerns, drop them down below. Let me know for now, guys. Have a fantastic day, all right?